the word of God says, eh, your righteousness, even in, I love it in, in Zulu, I'm not Zulu, but I love it in Zulu. If you are not in Christ. Okay. You understand? So, which means self-righteousness can make you to become like a wretched cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A you dirty know? cloth yeah. that is used for cleaning yeah, the floor. Cleaning yeah. The, when at that time you say, no, I'm righteous because I don't drink. Me now I'm righteous because I don't do this. I don't go there. Whatever, whichever the case might be, you know, how you put it and so forth too. Validate yourself to be righteous. Mm -hmm. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits. Um, it's, it's not many people who believe that they are operating in their calling. And before, before we sat down here, there's one thing that came across from the communications that, that we've been having, that you said that, I believe I am operating in my calling. Firstly, what is a calling? And secondly, what is your calling? Yeah. Um, good day. Hi. So hi. <laughs> for for being in your space. Yeah. We'll appreciate it, actually. So, so, so. Yeah. I'll just go straight quickly to your question. Yeah. <clears throat> a calling... Personally, I define it as um, calling from God. Mm -hmm. I believe, I know there are various callings from various, uh, can I say, kingdoms mm -hmm. or spaces. Yeah. Yeah, or realms rather. But for me, calling, it's a, it's a calling from God. When God calls you, which means there is something that God has put in you that he wants you to fulfill it mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. you're still on earth. Okay, okay. Now, the calling... It's like your mandate yes, on earth. Yes, a mandate. Yeah. So now, a mandate will not be effective until it's actually reciprocated okay. by the other person. Okay. So God can call you, and until you accept that calling, mm -hmm. your calling will remain calling without being effective. Huh. So I know it's a struggle for quite a lot of people, and many people, they get to know later that I'm called or God has called me. Sure. So, but I'm going to be very specific here. I'm going to be on God, on God's calling, mm -hmm. because that's what I understand, what um, I got exposed to. Sure. So um, I discovered actually my calling through other people before I can actually acknowledge it personally. Mm -hmm. People will identify something from me. Okay. And I'll say indirectly, it will be confirmed, but now it will only be confirmed as soon as you start or step into your calling and begin to work or function into your calling. Sure. Classical example, as I was growing up, I grew, I actually raised by my grandmom. Well, I refer to her as my mom mm -hmm. because she's the one actually who, who raised, you. raised me. Yeah. She was a very powerful woman. She was, you know, a very pillar to not only me as a as a child or a grandson at home, but to everyone. 
at the same time, she was very principled based. So I took it from that. So she was very um, enforcing us to go to church, number one. Number two, obviously for us to pray. So as we do that, obviously little did one knew that somehow you actually activating your calling on our way by responding to firstly what your parents are teaching you in terms of or in in in, in the things of 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 god in the things of uh spirituality so i um in my family actually i became the one that was more inclined to going to church and okay. of spiritual things so as a result we we're very so close with my my mom okay and then I would go to church. I was very young. I remember very well, actually. I think I was um, around 10, after 10 days. So each time when I go to church, I will see myself actually preaching, but without having a clear understanding as to what's going on here. So I would have that zeal, that quest actually to want to, to preach and all, but I did not have any idea. You know, I'll only, you know, um, see what the pastor is doing or the minister is doing there. Up until I remember, I think I was a teenager at that time, we were at church and the minister or the pastor said to me, no, come, you're going to give us uh, a sermon today. Okay. And I, I, I was really faithful and I did not know what to say, what to do and everything. Because now I was very curious and I was a person who likes to study, read and everything. So sure. I'll always do that in my young age, actually. I took a risk, actually. And, you know, I fumbled. But... I think I did the right thing. Actually. Yeah. You know, just read the word and you, I don't know whether you interpret the word directly sure, as sure. is, but I did that. Yeah, yeah. And all throughout that actually, many people, they began to say, no, but you did well, you did well, and they don't understand. So from there, I started now to gain more interest actually in getting to know more about God. Well, of course, you don't know how much in terms of praying, but you see yourself praying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't know whether you're praying right or so, but I was in that level. Okay, fast forward. Went to my primary high school at primary, obviously, because of uh, the assembly we see. Yeah. We do have all those uh, Christian movements. So there's an element of faith. So I want yeah. to see myself in those movements, sure. in those organizations. Uh, high school, it was more active now. But at that time, I was not yet born again. Okay. I just, you know, I would classify myself or define myself as a believer. I believed in God. And you were involved. I was, in I was involved, really. Yeah, I was yeah, really involved. Yeah. However, I did not actually notice much of my calling at mm. that time. I just like saw myself as someone who has interest, you know, going to student movement, you know, you seeing, you find yourself in uh, those established um, committees and all that, getting so much involved there. Yeah. Okay, fine. Until I went to, yeah, high school, that's why it was so much um, active. Until we started some some group in my neighborhood actually mm -hmm. where we were like singing mm -hmm. so as we were singing there um there was this lady i remember very well her name is mary she was born again so she was like this staunch christian mm -hmm. and she's a girl actually and in my spirit in me i said no i want to be like that that woman okay you know, she's so fired up you for know, god she loves the lord yeah you yeah know, she's so vibrant and everything i said oh god i really need that you know so a little did I know that actually, as I was, you know, in the same space, in the same environment, there's something that was actually fueling in me. Sure. Until um, I remember they called altar call, actually. They wanted people, okay, they were calling people who want to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And I went and they said to me, no, from today, you are born again. You know, wow. All right. Just like I that. So <laughs> yes, I got so yeah, excited. Yeah. But at the same time, that's when now I became so much active in studying the weight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I may not have much understanding, but at least I'll follow okay. as to what actually the word says, mm -hmm. what is actually expected, what is God saying about us. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, I remember we were actually now taken to another level, but that was after some time of receiving or yeah, receiving the Holy Spirit or to be baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit. Sure. And I went through that process. I even went through uh, water baptism. Mm -hmm. And now I, I appreciate because at the time I, I, I was doing my first year at university. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, I came across other, you know, uh, born again guys. Okay. And obviously the, 
movement grew actually all the student um christian movement. fellowships yeah yeah, yeah actually yeah. grew and then it was actually formed within there now when we were there i discovered something very 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 interesting and um unique so these guys they were not just coming to say no we christians but they were actually teaching the way okay so um after lecture uh, during the lecture time during our, our break time we'll just go under the tree and then they will teach about the word. Okay, study the word That's together. Intensify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I used to probably just to read, but now so, studying the word, understanding the breaking word, breaking it down. Remember very well the scripture that they that that actually made you know my life or that it brought ten around in my life. It's um, I might not actually quote it directly, but it's what uh, Jesus said when he said, "If you love me, you will lay your life down." and follow me so what he said basically it says um pick up your cross and follow me wow so now when they explained that it was like there's some form of a deprivation there to say okay which means i'm gonna leave whatever that i am whatever that i have my personality my being so i've got to leave everything mm, everything mm, that mm, i love what excites me what I, I, yeah and so yeah. forth that was my idea that so was my thing so and now at that time i said mm, i became a bit resistant I said, no, but I cannot. I mean, which means now I'm going to become someone else or somebody that I'm not. Dying you know? to self. <laughs> but at the same time, there was that interest in yeah, to say, yeah. oh, okay, this is how it works. So, but, you know, with time, I got to understand what it meant by, 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 by saying that. So effectively, they were saying, you must actually fully commit yourself, you know, sure. and give your life completely to Christ. Die so to serve self. Serve him, die yeah. from yourself, yeah. and serve God. Sure, sure, know? sure. And yeah, I, I I saw myself actually graduating and obviously advancing into the level or to the point where I'm supposed to be. Fast forward that, uh, yeah, I was now serving God. But when I say serving God, going to church, obviously. But now my level of understanding, my level of, 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 of um, perceiving the word and interpreting the word has actually grown. Okay. I'm now getting exposed to quite a lot of scriptures. Wow, quite interesting. And then um, I remember I was actually serving within the, the student uh, Christian fellowship. I was uh, part of the treasury. I was actually involved in the treasury um, committee. There. Yeah. Not only that, we had uh, what we call student organization performing arts. So within the, the, the Christian uh, fellowship, mm -hmm. there was a, 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 a unit where we like do like drama, mm -hmm. you know, but which is more religious and all that. Sure. So yeah, it was quite interesting. So that's when actually I went into my discovery of my calling. Now, I went to church. Now, where I was, or where I was actually raised, it was a Methodist church. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, I go to Methodist Church at that time. Yeah. I wasn't saved, but okay. I loved God. So sure. you're that's a believer. That's where I grew up. Yeah. That's where my grandmom and your roots are. Uh, yeah. Grew. And now you trained. How actually, yeah, I was groomed and trained and everything. So sure. was there. But yeah. the missing part and point that I discovered, and I thank God for that, is the part of being born again. That's when I discovered that no, there's a difference here. Because when I'm at a Methodist, the teachings, the preachings, they're way different from the charismatic church. Okay. So I remember very well, um, I used to attend two churches. So Sunday, I'll go to my home church, mm -hmm. which is Methodist. Wesel, yeah. We call it May Wesel, yes. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon, there was an interdenomination Tapa church mm -hmm. where we'll go every Sunday afternoon. So I will say I did not have social life to that extent. You know, it was very limited. Church was your social life. Church was my social yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I moved from one church in the morning or before midday or after just midday. And then later on, I'm on another church, but they were different. Because this other one, and I, I don't want to appear as if like I'm judging the churches or whichever the case might be. But obviously, you come, you call someone, you bring two people from different uh, churches, and you try to identify their doctrine slightly different okay yeah though all of us will say we believe in in, in the same god yes. but the doctrines but the doctrine have have yeah, have differences yes, sure exactly. so 
I was able, and I thank God for that grace that I was able to detect that at an early age and I had to make it to make a decision. I want to stop you there for this purpose of this question. Um, you're able to differentiate between the Methodist Church and the Charismatic Church. In the Charismatic Church, it's where you find the necessity to be born again. Yes. Why do you believe that in your calling, being born again was part of it? Because there are a lot of people who leave this earth, who are of a different doctrine, who do have a relationship with God, who have a strong relationship with God, and who also believe that they are doing right by God. Why was it so important for you to be born again? Um, number one, I will say I was able to distinguish the teachings, the how actually they, they interpret the word. I mean, the Bible mm -hmm. from one side mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the other side. Mm -hmm. So let me say, let me use left and right. I don't just for, for conclusive papers. Sure. So the one that I was attending on the left hand side, which is the former church where I grew up. In, yeah. Um, when they, and I don't want to be left here because it varies, it's not always the case. Yeah. When they, they, they preach the word or when they read the word, they will just call to the word as is. And that's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. On the other side, when they read and call to the word, they, they go deeper mm -hmm. in terms of explaining and giving scenarios and giving the true meaning as to why that was said, who was saying that, on what basis, under what circumstances. Okay, okay. On the other side, it was just at face value. Okay. You know? So they were not actually going deeper. And I can tell, on the other side, the left-hand side, the issue of being born again, it was not emphasized. However, being a believer, yes, it was actually emphasized. So there's this distinction. Okay. We can all be believers. This yeah. way I, and that's one thing I learned and I always you know, preach about. Mm -hmm. We all believe that there is God. You go to every religion, they will believe that there is God. But the difference is when Christ comes into play. Okay. Because that's what actually makes us to be distinct. The moment Christ comes in whatever belief that we believing in or standing on, that makes the difference. That's what I normally say. Yeah. We can all believe. All of us, we can believe the sun, we, it, it rises, you know, it sets. It sets. Yeah. You know, we all believe I can get hungry, I can go to sleep and everything. That's one thing. It's one part of believing. But uh, God has called us one, way, uh, one more step further than just believing. There is a cognitive dissonance that then comes into your life. Um, I'll explain it. Yeah. You are this young man. You've just graduated. You love God. You are serving God a lot. You are giving this 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 life of yourself I, I believe there's a life of holiness that you believe yes. you must live especially when we are young in our faith uh yeah newly born again yes we we emphasize holiness so much um maybe it's because we don't understand mm. grace mm. or it's just it's okay it's it's, it's being new in the faith yes. um, not that later on in the faith there's anything wrong with holiness but the reason i'm asking this yes. is now your actions, your feelings come into play. Mm -hmm. Your desires come mm -hmm. into play. Are you ignoring these desires or is now the confusion starting to come in because you're like, what am I feeling? And how is this going or not going along with this Bible that I'm reading? Exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's a very a brilliant one, actually. And I love the approach. Um, that is unavoidable. Confusion will be there. Mm -hmm. And um, low esteem will be there. Because the moment you feel different or you feel somehow automatically what comes to your mind, you feel that I'm contradicting what I'm preaching or what I've learned or what I need to bring to people. That I, I actually suffered quite a lot. What is the biggest contradiction you felt? Uh, the contradiction basically is, I think it's about my, my sexual orientation. Okay. Yeah. That's what actually brought so much deviation when I look at myself, when I look at what God has actually called me. So at that time, I must be frank and honest. I I actually concluded that no, um, no, God did not call me. 
hmm. because of that contradiction, because of that collusion. And um, but funny enough, that is why I'm saying there's really a distinction to be just a believer and to be born again. Because remember, when we are born again now, there is a spirit being that augments your spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. So he's the one actually who will always, you know, take prece uh, precedent and who will actually go before your being, your natural being. Mm -hmm. So while I was going through that contradiction and confusion and uh, denial and, you know, it was just a mess. I still, but though I went to God and I began to ask God that, and then what, what is this? What's going on? Because I thought you called me, though I haven't actually got to the point or to the level of understanding your calling, but I know that there is something that I'm carrying that God has actually given me. But now there's this other thing, this contradiction. What is happening in the mess? I want to know the mess. Yeah. Uh, in the mess actually is you get to find yourself as lukewarm. One moment, I'm this vibrant Christian. The next moment, you you're far different actually from what you said. And I must say actually- In your actions? Yeah, in my actions actually, because- Is that where you're saying you feel like you far different from what you are saying actually, at that, bo at that actually, moment? Before, before the even actions, mm -hmm. before the actions, it's, I, I would say the conscious. Okay. Yeah, before the action, conscious. Because to be quite frank, I stayed quite, um, especially during my high school, yeah, during my high school and part of my tertiary, I wasn't actually involved in any... Dating? Um, dating, yes. <laughs> you know, guys, to a lack of knowledge, actually, it can actually kill one or it can make one to perish. Okay. Because at that time, I was maintaining inverted commas. I'm holy before God. Hmm. I wasn't drinking. Well, I don't drink, I don't smoke. And as a result, I don't date. So I felt I'm the righteous before God. Hmm. Perfection. Yes. I'm the standard of perfection. I'm telling you, as a result, I was this person that judges other people. Hmm. I would lash at people. Hmm. I would be so, I was so mean, but sure. in an ignorant way, sure. and a way, yeah. actually. You'll come to me, I'm born again, remember? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and basically, that's what we need to ratify. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where we get into, to ratify this narrative, you know. So what I used to do, basically, born again as I am, you come, I see you smoking or you're carrying a glass of alcohol. No, I'm not going to come closer to you. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to defile me. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I, I cannot be associated with these people. I cannot go to such places. I cannot do this. And I did that for quite some time. And it was out of ignorance. And not only ignorance, but the teachings that we've been getting. Spiritual without arrogance as well. being actually, yeah, yeah. Without actually giving us the actual truth sure. about what sure. we're supposed to act upon. Or, yeah. You know, uh, conduct ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it it, it, it it happened for quite some time. And according to me, no, I'm in the right standing with God. I'm the Christian uh, guy or boy, you know, who loves the Lord. You know, I don't do this. I don't do that. I thought I was righteous. Until, because now I was very curious and I was following quite a lot of preachers, you know, and my 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 way of acquisition of of knowledge and to to advance myself in the things of the Lord, it was not narrow minded. It was not only to, for me to go to church or my 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 local church, but instead I'll even you know go one step further to listen to other tapes uh, of other preachers, you know, local and international and. I'm going to tell you, and I will never forget these two men of God who has actually brought somehow change and deliverance in my life. Hmm. Because all along, I thought I was at the right standing with God. Little did I know. The standard no, of perfection. Yeah, yeah. I was not. It was, I was not. So now when I go and listen to their teachings, because I even subscribed to their, their monthly magazines, you know, uh, I'll get correspondence, you know, in terms of like growing in the law, in the things of the Lord and yeah. so forth. That is, I'm going to mention them actually, it's as Kenneth Copeland and uh, uh, Creflo Dollar. Sure. Uh, I know those guys, they've really made me to become a better Christian. Yeah. Because number one, they were able to define, to explain, to go deeper and drill it to the core, to say, what is it that makes one to be righteous? 
and they even take me to the scripture that we often ignore, you know, because the word of God says, eh, your righteousness, even in, I love it in, in Zulu, I'm not Zulu, but I love it in Zulu. Mm -hmm. If you are not in Christ. Okay. You understand? So, which means self-righteousness can make you to become like a wretched cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A you dirty know? cloth yeah. that is used for cleaning yeah, the floor. Cleaning yeah. the, when at that time you say, no, I'm righteous because I don't drink. Me now I'm righteous because I don't do this. I don't go there. What, what, whichever the case might be, you know, how you put it and so forth too validate yourself to be righteous mm -hmm. until i got to the weight where the word of god says we have been made righteous you cannot make yourself righteous huh. that brought so much deliverance that brought so much eye opener to me to say oh all along i've been making myself righteous and i cannot make myself righteous until grace comes into play because huh. all along we've been driven or we've been led by the law that's another thing that we were not taught in our churches. Mm -hmm. Instead, our churches were governed by laws as opposed to grace. And mm. that is why now I make a clear distinction between the former church where I used to go. Grace was not preached. Grace was not exposed. I don't know if it was exposed, but we did not hear much of grace. Sure. And what is it that grace can be able to bring or impact people or someone who says, um, I'm born again. Mm -hmm. So there's a distinction here. So many churches, even traditional churches, they are, they are still, you know, one-sided. They are still governed by law and they don't recognize grace. So I will say grace is the one that has brought so much uh, liberation, so much uh, freedom, so much eye-opener in one's life, in my life, I will say that. So now, going back to the issue of righteousness, and then now I, I begin now to, to understand that, oh, okay, I don't make myself righteous. And he even went to an extent of saying, even if someone drinks or smokes, before God, that person can be righteous. Huh. And it came as a contradiction to me to say, how possible? How possible? Because in my mind, according to my knowledge, according to, know, to my know-how, My standard, no my self-righteousness. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that actually challenged me to go deeper into, into the word and now study the word with understanding. Because I can tell you right now, Many of us, when we read the weight or study the weight, we end up quoting weight out of context. We even go to speak the weight without understanding the weight. You get delivered, as you're saying, through yes. these various ministries, Interaction, interactions, yes. and, and, and the grace, obviously, more importantly, grace, importantly yes. that comes into your life and delivers you from this condemnation, because that's what it was, yes, and yes, the self-righteousness. Um, how do you now move on going forward re after accepting that I am a gay man? Uh, and have you accepted at that point? It's quite interesting, actually, because um, it's going to probably shock quite a lot of people. I, I have to make, it's not even a disclaimer. It's, it's a statement. I'm not in the closet and I'm not out. I'm just being myself. I know it's going to raise some questions mm -hmm. on what basis, how, what do you mean, what do you say? Details, because please. Now, yes, because now, uh, yeah, I'm going to incorporate the whole thing together. What you see is what you get. There's no deviation from, in terms of personality, from what I was, who I am, and what problem I'm going to become. Mm -hmm. So what you see, it's, it's, it has been. And... That is why for me, I don't go around displaying my sexuality. And at the same time, I don't go around concealing my sexuality. <laughs> I know it may sound a bit contradictory. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say is that I'm being myself. If one get to know, let it be. It's not to say I was hiding. I was just being myself. I don't know if that is actually. I know it, it raises quite a lot of... <laughs> it, 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 uh, I think... Um, my perception of it is yeah. that you are benefiting from the privilege that in your sexuality, because sexuality is an inside thing, it also refers to who we are sexually attracted to, emotionally attracted to, um, intellectually attracted to. That's what my understanding of sexuality is. And in this case, in this case, you are sexually, emotionally, uh, in intellectually attracted to a person of the same, same sex. sex as you, same gender, right? So if that is the case, 
um i don't think it has anything to do with displaying it because sexuality is just about that attraction it's got nothing to do with so, how you present yourself mm -hmm. how people present yourself is a gender expression of yeah. who they are um so you saying you don't go around displaying your sexuality i will dispute that one and disagree with that one because you are benefiting from being masculine that's all it is um the same way i'm masculine in how i present myself it's it's, it's got nothing to do mm. with what sexuality yeah. people should assume yes, you have yes yes, yeah. yes no i hear you yeah i agree with you um yeah so that is why actually uh, just to answer that or maybe just to come in there uh, especially i'm talking to the stereotype here in particular okay yeah um immediately they hear one no i'm a man of god or i'm born again hmm. automatically they there's a wife like that must be there box yeah yeah and throw yeah. you in there yeah that's it yeah so this is where you belong you know they uh what they call it demarcates you sure you know and um for me it's beyond that actually because firstly we have to understand that when we say someone is born again are we talking from the physical point of view or from the spiritual point of view what is it that is saved what is it that is born again mm -hmm. you know so for me uh, that is why actually i will say i still see the grace of god and that is why up to now because now i'm i'm, I'm knowledgeable and now i came to the level of understanding who i am and to align it actually with the call of god so i've seen god actually doing great and mighty things and god has never deviated actually from who he wants and how he actually looked at me Hmm. Now, coming to the issue of uh, sexuality, obviously, guys, um, like it or not, it will at some point haunt you to say, eh, I'm of a different sexual orientation, and at the same time, eh, God has called me. It, it, it was a bit of a struggle, of course, for me. I must say, I must acknowledge it wasn't an easy uh, 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 journey, or whichever the case might be, until I'll say what liberates one Obviously, with understanding, it's acceptance. And acceptance, it's not ex it's acceptance to yourself. And it doesn't take the next person to know that you have accepted yourself. Huh. That's how actually personally I view it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do it for yourself, mm -hmm. it will actually work for you. Like mm -hmm. you, you you made a, 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 a statement here to say uh, in terms of sexuality, it's not an issue of like displaying your sexuality and everything. You know, you just live, you are who you are. Correct. So that for me, that's how it is basically. Because the moment you self accept yourself, you'll be able to operate, you know, in all areas that actually God has actually ordained you to to live and to operate. There's somebody out there who does not have that level of self-acceptance just beyond sexuality. Mm. Um, they don't have self-acceptance for what their father did to them when they were younger. Yeah. Um, so it has caused uh, trauma responses in how they react to other people. They're quick to judge other people. They're quick to be mean to other people. They, they don't realize that their heart is a cesspool of being mean all the time. And they'll go to the comment section or right now they have their thoughts and they're saying, no man, this tabelo person is in a cesspool of sin. He just has uh, fallen into sin and has accepted sin, but he's using fancy English and he's calling it acceptance. Um, what do you have to say to somebody who's in their own journey of struggling with accepting who they truly are and has not released themselves from the mental and emotional cages that they live in, but they constantly want to point fingers at other people who have accepted themselves and they are telling them not, no, you are doing Christianity wrong. You're not understanding God. You are living in sin and you're an abomination. Well, we, we hear that every day, actually. And if you are not grounded, I'll say the first fundamental, important, um, I'll say something to take home or to carry or to possess is having God hmm. as your foundation or Christ as your foundation. I'm telling you, I, I want to be very clear and be open with it, head it, head it not being God or not me being born again, I don't think I would have actually accepted myself easily. Huh. I'll tell you the key or my formula that worked for me for self-acceptance. 
you uh, and I'm not saying people must follow this. It's what it actually worked. However, maybe it may be an inspiration to someone else actually who might be going through the same. And I'm not here to advocate for there's a platform for that actually to advocate people actually to be born again immediately and so forth so that they can accept themselves. No, no, it's a journey. Uh -huh. However, remember, you accept yourself. Who are you? Huh. Because you got to understand the origin of you. When I say the origin of you, obviously all of us, we, we got born. We, I mean, there's a process for us to get to where we are. We did not just, you know, jump from somewhere and so forth, you know. But now when I say that, actually, I'm trying to bring God into play. So you cannot actually accept yourself without God having accepted you. Hmm. You don't accept yourself first and then God accepts you. Power. God is the one who accepts you first. So God, what he does, he accepts us irrespective. And it's up to us to do what? To reciprocate and receive that acceptance that huh. God has actually given unto us. Sure. So it's something that has actually helped me a lot. All along, I've missed that, that, that piece of a puzzle hmm. because I wanted to do everything by myself. And that is why it will be very difficult. I can tell you right now, it will be very difficult if you want to do that thing by yourself without involving the creator, the person, because you don't own yourself. How come you want to accept yourself, but you don't actually own yourself? Yes, you are. God has given you life. You know, he has given you all the, you know, everything. Discretion is upon you. But up until you come to the point to say, but I did not bring myself to where I am. There is someone, there is an origin of me, actually, there is someone who brought me where I am, and it is God. So go back to God. I don't care whether you go to God with questions, you go to God with um, want to inquire more about yourself, but go to God because he's the one who has actually created Run you. Run back to God. As opposed to, yes, I know, he has used our parents as a vehicle for us to be born, mm -hmm. but the person, the creator of humankind, of human being is God. Mm. So that is why when things and going right in our lives or when you feel that no i don't understand myself i don't know who i am you go to the person who has actually created you because you are not who you are without god why go to the extent of opening a church i did not actually oh yeah it's a good question though <laughs> i did not actually open the church <laughs> um hey my story it's okay i'll tell you exactly so now from from that angle um where uh, i was from Methodist to the Charismatic Church. And okay, this is the point I missed. So with now understanding more of Christian life and everything, I realized mm -hmm. that this night I'm not I'm not getting much. I called the meeting. Okay, I called my mom and I told my mom that, no, Mina, I'm leaving the church. I'm now joining another church mm -hmm. because I felt that I, I aligned and, you know, I relate and the Charismatic Church. And at home, actually, my mom was not pleased. It hurt her so much, so much. But eventually, she accepted and gladly she released me. And it was on the basis that now I can be able to make my own decisions mm -hmm. because I, I was now older, you know, yeah, 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 adult, adult in terms of now I've reached that teenage stage and over twenty-one and all. I can make my own decisions. And at that time, I was uh, at a tertiary, you know. So some form of independence was obviously there. An element of independence was there. So now uh, I went to that church. I remember very well. I went every Sunday. I'll be there. There was this other friend of mine. He said to me, hey, there's a church. I want to invite you to this church. I said, church, I'm going. I I've got a church. And I can says, no, no, it's another church. Oh, okay. What church is there? He said, no, I'll take you there. And then. He invited me. I went to that church. And when I got there, I discovered, he never told me the, the nitty gritties of the church and everything. When I got there, I discovered that actually it was an inclusive church. The, the church that accepts every human kind that you can call by name that you know. For a moment, I was a bit amazed because I looked at the location where it was. The church was located in the bar. In the bar? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there were floors, actually. Downstairs is a bar. I think yes. Two floors up. It's, 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 a, it's another floor, but it's a church. So that's where the church is. Okay. 
I know. Remember, I'm still judgmental and self righteous. Mm -hmm. I went there. I said, "No, there's no way. Church can't be no, here. It can't be here. Church. Yeah. But fine enough. Fine enough. Hey, yeah, this God really. I I don't know this God really. Fine enough. When I got there, I could actually relate with the environment. I could relate with the atmosphere. One thing that I discovered there, they were preaching Jesus. Huh. I'm preaching salvation. Huh. I felt that no, I belong here. Huh. You know, I could feel in my spirit that yeah, God is here. I felt the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, the word was preached. The word was 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 taught in an amazing way. Wow. Now I'm trapped. And for me, I'm saying, God, and our subconsciously, this is what I've been praying for. This is what I've been looking for. And when you look the surroundings, people around. No, you could relate to these people. They don't fit the mold of what you have deemed as being a Christian, a right Christian. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it was it was so different. As, it, they were Christians, Christians, this staunch Christian that prays, that filled with the spirit of the Lord, praying in tongues. And I thought, I thought I was in church, but this is another church. Hmm. And this is where I feel I belong. Tell, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess, actually, when I got to that church, I remember I'm still a visitor, I'm still assessing, observing, you know, I felt that, no, I'm not a Christian. The level of um, Christian level in terms of uh, uh, preaching, understanding the word, preach, uh, 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 prayer. preaching the word, prayer, intercession, the, the, the worship, God, I said, God, where have I been? Yeah. Where they've been, these people all along. Yeah. So as, as time goes on, I fell in love with them. So I'll always be there every Sunday. After my main church, I'll go. Because uh, fortunately, they were attending. The church was starting at, at what time? At, at three. Okay. Three or four, yeah. And many people will question that. Oh, church, that starts at four. Church that it's in the it was in the CBD not only CBD but it was in the hill bro mm, the mm, west yeah. <laughs> you know and I went to that church and I grew I must say I grew a lot spiritually and in the things of the Lord and that's when some of the pastors within there they identified that no way they're going to call it because maybe I was there for a couple of, I would say weeks weeks that went two months. And then all of a sudden now they want me to be part of the executive. I'm telling you, and there are people who have been long here. And then those said, no, 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 no. You are going to teach the word. We see you are anointed. Wow. I want to interrupt you for a second. You'll continue. Please don't lose your train of thought. I just have to share that there, there is there is a testimony in that story that you're telling exactly. and the fact that you are saying church one is just above a bar yes. a tavern whatever yes. you'd like to call it yes. church is inclusive yes and when you say it's in hillbro um hillbro is known for yeah. drugs exactly. it's known for people getting violated yeah. it's known for people who go there because they want to sell their bodies exactly. it's known for people who have sexualities that are not mainstream so what i'm getting here is a testimony that God planted himself through people that he called to call people who are deemed as not good enough by exactly. society to find God too. Exactly. Exactly that. You hit it on <laughs> Exactly that. That's what actually came and confirmed my calling to God to say, indeed, God is no respecter of persons. Hmm. Yeah. I can tell you right now, really. Obviously, there will be disc there will be a uh, criticism. There will be you know looking down, saying a lot of things and everything. And I thank God. I turned you know a blind eye. I didn't want to listen to them because what I was receiving, what I was getting there, it was actually fulfilling my spiritual uh, need. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but my eye began to be open. And. One thing that I learned there is love. We hmm. thought we know God's love. Sure. And it's what was actually emphasized. I'll, I, I will never uh, forget this, actually. They were always preaching about John 3.16. Mm -hmm. And I know many of us will undermine that scripture. Mm -hmm. For so God and, loved the world yeah, we and gave it, his only son. something that we're missing there. Yeah. If you read it, 
It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The underlining weight key there, whosoever believes. That, in, that includes everyone. So, whosoever. Huh. So many of us, we used to preach, we used to quote that scripture, and we missed to understand whosoever. What does whosoever mean? If we even, we, we can go to it. It's all inclusive. All inclusive. Yeah. Irrespective. It does not leave that, anybody out. That deliberated me from that contradiction. Huh. And I said, wow, finally, I got to understand now I got to be brought to the level where actually God wants to see me operating uh, uh, effectively on my calling. And immediately when they started now to, to bring me on executive to serve within the church, I gladly did that because yeah. now I, I you are liberated. And, and now I'm saying, oh, all along I've been excluding myself, all along I've been judging myself, all along mm. I've condemning. been struggling to accept myself, condemning myself, self condemnation, and all that. Not only that. So they were actually operating or advocating on two scriptures, not only two scriptures, but those were fundamental scriptures. Mm -hmm. It was John 3, 16 and uh, Romans 8, 1. Mm -hmm. Therefore now to those who are in Christ, therefore now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Therefore now, mm -hmm. you follow. It might have been prior, but therefore now, as long as you are in Christ, no more condemnation. That has delivered it and, and liberated me as mm -hmm. well. You know, and now as I attend now, I've got to be exposed to quite a lot of uh, scriptures, uh, the word of God that, you know, one will always run away from the moment you go probably to a, a particular church or you listen to the preaching somewhere, they quote a certain scripture and you feel that, yo, this is actually um, convicting me, the scripture. No, I cannot. And of, but now when they explain it, when they go deeper in analyzing the the, 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 the the weight and the scriptures, you begin now to understand, to say, no, but the God that we serve, similarly, like there's this different God that we've been told about. Hmm. Because now how we portray God, and that's one thing that um, I want to actually always emphasize, we portray God as this monster to people. Hmm. And the moment you portray God as a monster to people, how do you expect people to come to God? Hmm. Nobody runs to a monster. No one will go, yeah, no one will go to God. Hmm. But now what we have done, we have substituted God's love with probably our earthly love. And the earthly love will never fulfill the purpose that God has for humankind. Hmm. Until we embrace God's love in yeah. us and we understand God's love, it will make life easier for us to extend that love to other people. Because that's another area where I used to suffer or to, to struggle a lot. Uh, in terms of self-condemnation, not only that, but... A condemning other people. I missed God's love in me. However, I claimed that I'm a Christian. Hmm. So that's what probably many people are going through. So because you didn't operate from a place of understanding, of God's, understanding love, God's love, you could not portray it I to the next person. To, yes. You defaulted to judging to the judging next person. Instead. Criticizing. Criticizing. Diminishing. Demeaning. Yes, demeaning and all that. And actually basically creating a separate world for certain people. Hmm. And trust me, when I got that uh, deliverance and knowledge, I, I had to go back to God and repent. You'll tell me if I'm crossing the line because you don't have to go to super personal about your life. That's not the essence of this conversation. Yeah. Um, how do you navigate the constant questioning, especially from people who know that you're a pastor or an apostle, you, you'll tell me there yes. too, what's the correct title? Mm -hmm. um, the constant questioning about where's your wife, where are your kids? <laughs> no, I simply tell them I don't have. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if they want to take it one step further to say why and all that, no. I mean, God, if allows, that will happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just like that. Deliberately so, because um, I don't think that is hiding your sexuality. No. It's personal. It's, it's no one's business. Like, we don't go around asking people, no, how many kids exactly. do you have? <laughs> have you had a miscarriage this year? Do you have no, this disease? No, exactly. Right? So th that's how I take it as well. Yeah, And yeah. that is why I, I can't even, like, entertain it to that extent. Okay. I mean, I'll respond. You know, that's it. How many, how many pastors live in self-condemnation or are in marriages with women that they don't want to be in because the Christian community yeah. does not allow them to propel to a high level enough if they don't have the wife, the two kids, 
the German car, the SUV, you know, the, the pack, quite a lot. the box. Quite a lot, quite a lot. Because now the danger of that, which is what I've experienced at some point, and I had to step out from that. You end up, and I know we can generalize that, many people are talking about it. You end up living a double standard. And for, for me, not only that, remember there are individuals here, there are other parties that get hurt, uh -huh. that to be affected. What do you mean by double standards? Double standards to say, um, I know who I am, however, I'm going to live a certain life because of people. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of example. We, we do have men of God, quite a lot of them. We do have uh, people who have been called by God, mm -hmm. not only men of God, but also ever he has been called by God. They, they're not actually operating at the level where God has actually called them because now for them, especially if you have been accepted yourself and found yourself exactly where, it's not, and it's not an easy issue of confusion. No, no, no. It's the issue of like um, positioning myself where I needed to be. So what they do basically, they will say, yeah, I know I'm called, I know I'm men of God, I know I, you know, I, I pastor or I, 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 I preach the word of God, but at the same time, I'm, I'm this kind of a person. And obviously it will come as a, as a conflict. So what they do normally, it's either they will want to satisfy what the community are saying about them or portray, in most cases, let me just say, portraying what they are not because now there's pressure and remember this pressure that comes it's a it is a pressure that comes innocently without knowing about you so it's up to you how do you receive that pressure how do you react upon that pressure so if they come to you and they said they don't know i mean they see you you always sing you always by yourself there's no wife there's nothing and then they put pressure i know that churches like that Hey, you might, they even go to an extent of organizing, finding you. <laughs> yeah, organizing you, either a girl or so and so forth. And if you're going to succumb to that, I know it's not easy, but at the end of the day, uh, late, in the long run, it will actually uh, you know, uh, affect you. Because the true you, at the end of the day, actually will come out. You see? So now we, we actually, we've got quite a lot of uh, people who are faced with that. And obviously, it would be up to them. What is it that they prefer to do? Are they going to live the way they are living until whenever? I don't know. And how does that actually affect them? Some actually be cold without any, 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 any negative effects, whichever the case. But we vary as people. You know, I don't know yeah. if it's their liberation. It's how they want things to be. But for me... Um, is it fair on these wives that are in no, these marriages? Not. That is what I'm saying. The other part will be affected. Actually. Hmm. It's not. It's not fair, actually. It's not fair. It's, it has, it has, and especially if you are a person that promotes one man person. I mean, really. Which means now you're not actually living up to your... The standards uh, that you, yeah, you that speak is, of. Yeah, exactly. You hmm. know, and, and in most cases, and I can say it's really, um, women are the most vulnerable, you know, people. And that gets to be victims in circumstances like this. We have had a lot of stories, actually. Lots and lots of stories. And it had so much. Because now, for me personally, I've got sisters, you know, my siblings and all that. And I'm saying, what if it happens to my sibling or mm. my sister? Mm. It, won't think, it won't be good. Actually. Sure, sure. I'd rather be honest. That is why, for me, I said, well, they can say whatever that they say. I, I'd rather not engage myself to something that I know that eventually it will hurt someone or it will affect someone. Mm, mm, so mm. rather let me remain where I am, you know. So that's the... In instances where, um, because somewhere in life we all seek companionship, mm. in instances where you've seeked companionship and you were in a, a, a committed relationship, how did... Did it ever come to a point where the person you were with was uncomfortable with you because you are a pastor? Yeah, I'm going to answer that actually in two ways. Isn't it? Um, it's not uncomfortability or so, but for them, they feel, oh, they can't handle me huh. because of 
who I am, and I will suggest that probably the anointing I'm carrying. So mostly they feel that I'm too much for them. Okay. And personally, uh, it's a bit unfair because I'm human. I'm like any other person, actually, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but I must say, actually, uh, in my relationships, eh, many they will honor that which God has put in me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I thank God for that. And some, they obviously, <clears throat> they're not quite, you know, because probably it's understanding and not knowing much about the know, faith, the, the faith and the yeah. calling and all those things. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so that is why. In most cases, and moreover, if I get to know someone, I mean, I it's one thing that I always I'm open about it. I'm honest about it because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, I cannot, I cannot, even if I you shy away from to, your calling. Yeah, yeah, no, I cannot. It's it's there. Yeah, it's there, and I did not bring it myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, and that actually gives me so much, you know, joy and comfort to say, you know, I, I did not call myself. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. actually, that one G, you know, it opened doors for me personally. You know, so the one who has called me, I take it up now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now in, with your relationship now, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, family as well. How have you navigated making them understand that you can be a called man of God in, in your situation? I didn't want to do anything. You didn't have to do anything? I did not. Because and the I, exceptional you know, human you are. Exactly. I think in that case, you know, um, God works in me in, in very mysterious ways, you know. Yeah, God knows how to prepare people. God knows how to instill wisdom to people. I think God did that to my family huh. in an amazing way. In an, um, if, I can't even describe it or explain it. <laughs> what I'm going to say here, it's something that I've never said it or people will get to know about it at home. Up to now, no one has ever asked me about girlfriend or their wife. <laughs> it's that wisdom and love, as you it's, say. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. And the level of respect mm. that I'm getting, it's amazing. Not yeah. only respect, love. Yeah. Overprotective. So it's unconditional. It's just unconditional. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And that has never reduced me to become, you know, inferior or whichever the case might be. At home, I'm a grandson. Eh? Yeah. Um, maybe for people just to get to know and to maybe they'll understand how God works. You know, um, last week, actually, you know, because I study a lot, I read a lot and I interact actually with God in various ways. I mean, one thing that God has given me has given me the gift of revelation. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, I'll bring that. Let me conclude this first. Eh? I'm coming from the family. I lost my both parents. I need to bring this section across so that people can understand where I'm coming from and they can actually relate to this tableau. Many people that may think that they know me, I don't think they do. All right. I'm coming from a very disadvantaged family. I lost my dad. I was very, very young. I don't know my dad. He died. I was very, very, I was probably, I don't know, maybe hardly a month or after I got born, my, my dad was killed. And then um, at home, I'm a grandson. I've got obviously my, okay, it's myself and my sister to my mom. And then we grew up in a family house where they are uncles, cousins, and all that. But I wanna appreciate and thank my late mom because when he taught, when she taught us, she said, you are all my children. I don't want anyone to say, no, 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 I'm the mother here. Yeah. At the time, she's a grandma, yeah. you know? That's how actually she has actually raised us. So now at home, we're very disadvantaged. If I were to, to be honest and be open, I think at home or to my family, we might be the last, 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 last people to understand descents or to live decent life. Huh. Do you know all these things, these good things, scissors, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, throughout our lives, 
throughout our lives. We'll go to school. And I'm not, please, people must get it right. I don't want, I'm, I'm not expecting any pity from anyone, but I need to write this so that people can understand. You know, it's one thing to express that, no, it's not like that and everything. It's one thing, I mean, everyone can say that. You know, I mean, I'm talking about spending weeks, months without having anything to eat at home. So Christmas, New Year, at home, it's not like that, you know. It will be like, it's all the same. Yeah, it's all the same. And one thing that my mom, because she's a prayerful woman, she will still teach us to pray in mm. that atmosphere, in that mm. environment. Mm. Whether you went to school without having anything to eat, when you come back, you still do the necessary chores, the house chores, you still behave the way you're supposed to do and everything. That's how she taught us. And Minage, I became a class breaker at home, being a grandson, so everything started with me to acquire metric, to go to the varsity, to have my own house, car, to build the kitchen, everything. And then so those who came after me, at least they have, I was able actually to pay the way for them. So now what I'm trying to say, I saw God working in a very, you know, mysterious ways in our lives, in my life, in my family's life. Up to now, one thing that I can say, God's grace, it's sufficient, it's still there to cover whosoever, whosoever. If you open up your heart to God, God can do great and mighty things. Up until you do that, you will be able to discover the potential that you have or the gift that God has given you. We're nearing the end of our conversation. Um, that's your camera. I want you to speak to a young man who's 12, 13, 14, 15, or a young lady in a similar situation. Um, they 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 grew up. They are growing up in in Africa, South Africa, UK, Kenya, wherever they are, because th this program pierces the, the the boundaries of the world, and they know they have no sense of belonging because they are so confused about their sexual orientation. They feel they don't belong anywhere, and the world around them is telling them that they are not enough. They will never be enough. They are an abomination. How can they find peace within themselves in one minute? And the, the, the only thing that they can do or to find peace uh, is to go to God. I know that it may sound, you know, very at face value, but that's, 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 that's the bottom line. Because the moment you go to God and you become transparent to God, because God knows us. We cannot mock God, we cannot deceive God. Go to him as your creator and say, God, yeah, I am. I don't understand myself. I don't know myself. I'm a mockery to the community. They're saying this and this. Uh, please uh, show yourself. Give me an understanding. Give me an insight. And to get to the level of knowing that you are, you have created me. I did not come from anywhere. And with that, I'll be able to get to the point to know that God loves me. I've been created by God. There's nothing much I can do hmm. about who I am. And that somehow it will bring a level of peace to someone. Because you go to people, yes, people, they can advise, they can counsel and do that. But to a certain extent, until they go to God. I, mean, I know that, I mean, obviously many people, we don't believe in God. Many of us, we don't understand this. But that's the only way you can do. God is, a, is our creator. There's no way God can turn you back. And one thing that I want to say is that God loves you. And until you experience and discover the love of God, you'll always be running around in circles, trying to get that um, thing that will fulfill that virtue. The only person is God. Mr. Tapelon Kwanazi, thank you for your time. It's been an absolute privilege. Um, there is a level of understanding that I got from you about different elements of how God makes us. God makes us very uniquely and our journey with God can be very different and someone out there who's never found God, yeah. this might be the time yeah. that they do. So thank you so much for your time. It's been a privilege. And I hope you watching or listening to this um, get to discern who you are. You get to dig deep and understand where you are with God and find the peace that Mr. Tapelo has said is possible to find in your life, in this lifetime. And just give life one more try. I'll see you on the next episode.
Introducing the epitome of luxury living. Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.